Okay, so we, we kind of have a few concepts to get over. So at first, I was going to do uh, just a simple image uh, thing for this one. But I've decided we, we've got a few bits of concept to get over before we can actually get to that point. I mean, we've kind of covered the idea of if conditions, we've got functions, we've got variables, we've got other sorts of data structures and stuff. Now, this is what we call in JavaScript an object. Now, an object has to have some sort of a blueprint to say, hey, I want this shape. <clears throat> At this point, we just made like an empty object there to fill with key value pairs. But in essence, we can kind of organize our code into a bunch of these objects. For instance, instead of having to put player X and player Y like this, just out there in the global scope, <clears throat> and having this X and Y here not being to do with the ball, really, just have, having X, Y, we could kind of make what we call classes. And classes are like a blueprint for an object shape. So for our purposes, let's, let's say that we wanted a player class to store these values in. So we could either go, okay, I want this kind of to convert into just an object without actually saying it's a class and just say X, Y, speed, size, yeah? And basically, instead of equals, we put a colon and whatever it is, the value we want. So X being 50, Y being 50, speed being 50, sorry, not 50, speed being 2. Now what else? We've got X, Y, speed, and size. The size was 20. So it needs to be set to something. So we'll say, let player equals this. Now that, instead of having all those things like player X, player Y, it's now player dot X and player dot Y, player dot speed, player dot size. So we have access to all of these things. So it's slightly more naming convention based, which is what object oriented programming is all about. It's, it's bothered about the noun, the object itself. Then these are just things that happen to be attached to the object. So if I player dot X, that will equal 50 at this point. So we can get that and console log it, or we can get it and we can set it and we can do things with it. We can do the same for the ball. Instead of player, we could have another object called ball. So we've already had objects like this keys as an object, but it's an empty one. But now we're kind of saying, hey, I want you to have these attributes. So your X might be, what was it? In fact, we could just literally copy these out. Could go, okay, canvas, copy that. So this X is going to be actually that. Yeah. The Y for this is going to be that. It just means a bit of refactoring and moving things about. And you, you could still have these sort of like in and underneath each other kind of things so that would kind of look at them in this way as well. You don't have to have them on the same line. There's your actual ball object. So canvas width, our Y is going to be the canvas height one. So we're just literally taking these values, uh, copying them, and pasting them instead of this. <clears throat> and then we got, I think this one's got DX and DY and ball size. So we can just literally, just for now, copy these. Take that. Paste that. Now, we don't want ball size. We can just say size for this. Remember, we don't want an equals. We want colon. And we don't want a semicolon. Same sort of thing, dx and dy can go and be these attributes instead. So we're just kind of refactoring it to be <clears throat> more organized, if you like. So now the ball has these attributes. The player has these attributes. Let's say they have different attributes. They're both still objects, 
some sort of know, things that we can do stuff with. Which <clears throat> are so just a bit tidier than having like player X, player Y, player speed. We still have player X, player Y, player speed, and player size, but in a slightly more organized fashion. So we could refactor the rest of our code here. Let's say wherever we've got player X, we put player.x. So we're going to look for player X. We can just do this and do control F to find. Go down here and replace it with player dot x there's eight occurrences so we can go okay there we go now we've swapped those out anyway we've got player y so we can just swap that out for a y and say okay well there's eight occurrences of that i want player dot y so we've refactored that now wherever we've got player speed we can have player dot speed There's 13 occurrences, that's how we can speed. There we go, we swap those out. Now, our player has a player X, player Y, player speed. Do we have a player size somewhere, I think, isn't it? <clears throat> so, how are we doing that? Is that just the attribute that's just there? Oh, there we go, we've got these. So, player size here. So, we can look for player size and swap that out for player dot size. Now, these ones are not a lot of use because we're kind of rewriting things there. So let, let's get rid of that. That's not needed right now. Yeah. So now we've refactored it to have this player object here. We haven't refactored the ball just yet fully. But let's see if this still works. Let's save this. We've got rid of all of those just floating around player variables around and let's see if it actually still renders the player and does what we expect it still works exactly the same we've just refactored that code to be a bit tidier let's do the same with the ball so we want the x was the ball x so anywhere we see exactly an x so we need to here we need to be a bit more careful because we've got an x here we've got a dx with an x in it so we need to say okay i want exactly this so only x not x with other stuff <clears throat> I also want to make sure it's exactly that X. So I want these two highlighted here. There are 14 occurrences of X, but we still have player X there. We don't want to change that. So we've got to be a bit careful about this. Yeah. So there's a, a few awkward scenarios here. Because we've got this player.x that's still literally saying it's an X. Do you know what I mean? So we've got to be very careful about this. So we might be better off sort of doing this manually because look, got that one, we got that one. So what we're going to do, we're going to not do the replace because that's going to be a bit messy. We're going to have to manually go off and take a look. So drawing the ball, so that's to do with the ball. So we want this to be ball.x and ball.y. And instead of ball size, we want ball dot size. And kind of go okay well that's where that is is there any other occurrences we, we need to go in and look we know that these are not really needed just yet because we've just changed that out but we'll carry on looking anywhere we're going to uh, use the concept of the ball like down here update that doesn't want to be x that wants to be ball dot x so any of these ball dot x and ball dot size <clears throat> and ball dot dx ball dot dx same with the y you just can go ball dot y ball dot y ball dot size ball dot dx oh sorry dy all dot dy and then this x is going to be the all dot x all dot the x all dot y and all dot dy again 
This is just part of a refactor. We, we're just thinking about how can we sort of like clean up our code. We clean it up even more. Now we've got move player. We could have like update player. We could have like an update inside the player class and everything. But we'll we'll kind of think about that as we go because we need to kind of slowly refactor this and clean it up as we go. So now we've we've I think we've got the ball done. Is there any other areas where perhaps we'd be utilizing the actual ball? I don't think there is, is there? We'll have an error if there is anyway. We also now need to get rid of these. We're not using these for anything. So those can go. No need for them whatsoever. Let's save that. Let's see what's broke. Refresh. That looks all good. It's bouncing around. It's doing exactly the same stuff as it was before we did a refactor. So now what we've actually done is we've kind of cleaned up this code and made it very more, well, a lot more organized in this situation. We can organize it even more. We could pull out the functionality of drawing the ball and just say, well, hang on. I want to kind of put this inside that object. Remember that classes can contain data and functionality. So I could say, okay, well, I want this ball to also have draw. Take away that ball. The ball has a draw. Yeah. So, so it can have a functionality. But we don't really write these things exactly like this. I mean, we could go. Something like that. And say this draw is a function that takes in maybe an X and a Y. Or even it could be one that because it's drawing this specific ball, it could just say, okay, well, I want to just draw this ball. So how did we draw the ball? Draw ball was a, a fill style of green. So we can copy that. Pop that inside here. We can take this uh, fill rect with the ball X, Y and everything. Place that in here. And now... We instead of doing that draw ball, we, we do ball dot draw. So so this draw ball turns into a ball dot draw. So we're calling this function inside this object. So if I get rid of this draw ball now, I'm not using it. I refresh. We're still drawing the ball. Right, organization of code is a lot cleaner. Take a look at that. So we've got our data members. We've got some functionality. We can add more functionality. We could have an update. Yeah, we need a comma between these, remember, because they're different attributes. So now we have updates. So instead of actually saying render this and do that, or while well, we're doing draw there, instead of like our update having this logic here, we can just grab this, copy that. And in our update, we can paste that and paste the other bit of the update. Now this functionality, we can get rid of that part and get rid of that part and clean this up. And we have ball.update. Let's take a look at how that looks. The ball's still updating. It's doing exactly the same functionality, but we've just cleaned up our update method. Now, again, we can do the same with the player. Instead of move player, we could have like update player that happens to move the player. So we have a lot of different sort of like ability to kind of clean this code up into these more organizational points. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to do this part. 
I'm going to let you do that. So what I want you to do is we've already got the kind of the data. Remember, we have a comma there. And you can put the name of the function, colon, the function, and then the stuff in there to do that. I'm going to get you started with this one. Now go and fill that in. But remember that we're taking the functionality out of the draw player. This functionality, putting it up there, removing the draw player. And wherever we say draw player, we have player dot draw. So up here to do player dot draw. Yeah. And here, where are we? Sorry. Here we need to, to do fill in the logic. Okay. So there's a bit of homework for you. Have a go at doing that. You've watched how to do it here. Now you do it here. So you want to do the draw and we also want the update function. So we're going to, this is going to be a more interesting one because like I say, it's a different name, but try and do it. If you do, if you don't, get it done it's okay we'll cover it in the next video anyway but it'd be nice for you to kind of have a go and try and do this okay i'll see you in the next video